Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and get started with these Torque notes. Well, what is Torque? I'm glad you asked. Torque is the rotational equivalent of force. And you guys should be pretty familiar with force. We had that giant unit on forces. In case you forgot, force is how much something feels a push or a pull. Torque, on the other hand, is how much something feels a twist or a turn like twisting a doorknob or turning the wheel of your car. Torque is going to be represented with the letter tau. It kind of looks like a little baby T with a backwards uh, bottom. The units of torque are going to be Newton meters. And we'll understand where those units come from in a sec when we take a look at the equation. Torque is a vector, which means it has magnitude and direction. Same with force, because force was a vector that had magnitude and direction. Over here we just have a picture showing us what torque is, so a wrench screwing in a nut. And then over here we have a person opening a fridge for possibly a late night snack. That person is applying force to that fridge door, which is swinging the door open. So let's talk a little bit more about torque. And I want you guys to uh, think back to linear quantities. And we know that with linear quantities, we had a net force. And net force caused acceleration. Well, we just said torque and forces are similar. So with rotational, we're going to have torque, which makes sense because we're on a rotational unit. And with torque, it's also going to have the ability to have a net torque, which is going to cause an angular acceleration. Net torques are going to result in speeding up or slowing down the spin of an object. And we can find that net torque by adding up all of the torques that are happening to an object. Similar to what we would do with net force, we would add up all the forces acting on that object. Torques are actually caused by forces. So you can't have a torque unless you have a force. And the distance that force is being exerted from what we call the pivot point is going to impact the amount of that torque. And again, we'll take a deeper look into this when we look at the equation on the next few slides. Like we mentioned before, the units of torque are just Newton meters, which makes sense because we just said that torque depends on forces and it depends on distance. So maybe some of you are getting an idea on how we figure out torque. Now let's take a look at that equation that we've been mentioning. In the equation, we can see that we have tau is equal to r times f times sine of theta. I know what a lot of you guys are thinking, ugh, another trig function. But you're going to see in a sec that this trig function really isn't there most of the time. So r is going to stand for the radius. Over here, we can see the radius from that pivot point. f stands for the force being exerted. And theta is the angle between that force and the radius. So down here, I have another picture showing that exact same thing. How could we get a small torque? Well, by looking at this equation, there's three things that can happen. Number one, we could have a small r, meaning that we have a small radius or a small distance away from that pivot point. Number two, we could have a small force, which also makes sense. We're not exerting a lot of force, so we would have a small torque. And then lastly, we could have a zero degree angle of contact, which just means that sine of zero is zero degrees. A zero degree angle of contact just means that our force is parallel to that radius. And there's no torque if our forces are acting parallel to the radius. Now let's take a look at the opposite side. How could we have a big torque? Well, a big torque is just going to be the opposite. We could have a big R or a big distance away from that pivot point. We could have a big F, which just means that we have a big force being exerted. And then we could have a 90 degree angle because sine of 90 is at a maximum, which is going to give us 1. Which just means that our force is perpendicular to that radius. So over here, I have a little gif for you guys showing the most torque. And then when we change that angle and make it more parallel to our wrench, it becomes less torque. Let's take a look at a conceptual example here on a door and how it might be easy or difficult to open that door. And we have our equation from before. So let's say that you are trying to push open a door, but it's blocked by some trash. 
opening the door is going to require you to push with all your might. Where does it make the most sense to push that door? Are you going to push it really close to the hinge? Or are you going to push it really far away by the doorknob? Well, if we look at our equation above, we're pushing with the same force, so force is not going to impact it. These forces are both perpendicular to our pivot point. So that sine of theta is just going to transfer into sine of 90 degrees, which is just one, which means that this is not going to matter either. So the only thing that's going to matter is R. The bigger the R, the bigger the torque. So B is closer to the hinge than A, meaning that we want to push this door at A or the furthest point from that pivot point. You guys have a second right now. Why don't you, uh, you know, pause your video and go uh, find yourself a door and try to open that door really close to the hinge and then try to open it really far away from the hinge and see which one's easier to do. Now we're going to take a look at a second example and this one has to deal with a wrench because some of you might be uh, mechanics in the future or maybe uh, handy people that are going to use tools. Let's say that you're trying to loosen up a nut that has been rusted in place. Where would you rather hold the wrench when trying to make it turn? This is very similar to our door example. So we have a person holding at point A and a person holding at point B. Point A is one meter and point B is twice the distance at two meters away from that pivot point. If we think back to our previous example, it's going to be very similar where the force is the same in both cases. The angle is the same in both cases, so the only thing that we can change is the R, and we know that a bigger R is going to give us more torque, so we want to hold it at point B. Which just means that if we're ever trying to loosen something up, we want to find a very long wrench to do that to make our lives a lot easier. So let's look at another example, but this time we're going to do some math. So let's figure out what the torque exerted on the wrench below is. We know that torque is equal to R times F times sine of theta. The R value is going to be 0.15 meters because that's the distance that we are from that pivot point. The F is 2.5 newtons and the angle, it looks like it's perpendicular, is going to be 90 degrees. So when we multiply all this stuff together, we find out that the torque should just be 0.375 newton meters, which is a pretty small torque, but we're also applying a very small force. Now let's compare three different scenarios. We have our equation above, so let's take a look at these situations below and figure out which one produces the torque with most magnitude and which produces the least. So let's start with the red box there. If we look at our first example here, we know that we're going to use our torque equation. And since it's 90 degrees, we can just ignore sine of theta. If we plug in our values, we have our force, which is 10 newtons, and the radius or the distance from the pivot point, which is 0.2 meters. So just multiplying those two together, we find out that the torque should be two newton meters. Not too bad. Let's take a look at the blue one. Same thing, except this time we have an angle that is not 90 degrees. So we need to keep that sine of theta in there. Doing so, we have force is 15 times sine of 45 degrees. Well, sine of 45 degrees is just 0 0.707 times R, which is 0.2. Multiply all that together, and we find out that torque should be equal to 2.12 newton meters. Next, we're going to look at the purple box down below. And same thing, same equation. This time it's at a 60 degree angle. So we have torque is equal to the force, which is 22, times sine of 60, times 0.1. Multiply everything together, and we get torque is equal to 1.9 newton meters. So the one that produced the torque with the most magnitude was going to be the blue one right here. The one that produced the least amount of torque is the pink or purple one down there. So here's our regular equation, but now we're gonna look at this net torque equation. And we can basically say that net torque is just the sum of all torques. So I have torque A plus torque B plus torque C, so on and so forth. It just depends on how many torques are in the problem. We mentioned before, torque is a vector, which means that direction is going to matter. Clockwise is considered the negative direction, and counterclockwise is considered the positive direction. For rotational equilibrium, that just means that net torque is equal to zero, just like linear equilibrium when net force equaled zero. 
rotating at a constant angular velocity as a result of having a net torque which is equal to zero which would make sense because the forces would cancel each other out meaning that nothing is speeding up this object anymore and if nothing's speeding it up anymore it is no longer accelerating meaning that it is moving at a constant angular velocity another option with net torque could be that it's not rotating just like with net force how an object could be at rest same exact concept just in the rotational plane let's take a look at this first example two disgruntled business people are incorrectly trying to use a revolving door which is initially at rest person a exerts a force of 625 newtons perpendicular to the door at 1.2 meters from the hub the other person person b exerts 850 newtons perpendicular to the door at a distance of 0.8 meters from the hub while trying to go the opposite direction we have our diagram down below on the right hand side where we can see person A exerting that 625 newtons at 1.2 meters and person B exerting 850 newtons at 0.8 meters. We want to figure out what is the magnitude of the net torque on the door. So we know that net torque is equal to the positive minus the negative or the counterclockwise minus the clockwise. Because they're in opposite directions we know that one's positive and the other's negative. Person B is moving counterclockwise, so they're going to be positive. We know that torque is equal to force times radius when the force is perpendicular to the rotating axes. Now we're going to take our numbers and plug them in. Then we're going to simplify, and then it's just some simple algebra. And we find out that the net torque is equal to 70 newton meters. Again, it's positive because I asked for the magnitude of the net torque on the door. Example number two, where on the seesaw could we put sad Keanu Reeves so that he sits to balance out tiny little Bernie? Well, we know where Bernie's at right now. Looking at the seesaw, we can see that Bernie is situated 1.5 meters away from the pivot point and has a mass of 40 kilograms. Keanu has a mass of 75 kilograms, but we don't know where he's sitting. If we want them to balance each other out, that means that we want the seesaw to be at rest which means that we want our net torque to be equal to zero. Their torques, in other words, should just cancel each other out. So torque of Keanu minus torque of Bernie should equal zero, meaning that Keanu's torque should equal Bernie's torque. Since these forces are exerted perpendicular, it's just F times R of Keanu is equal to F times R of Bernie. We can plug our numbers in Force gravity is the force that's acting on this seesaw, and we know that force gravity is the mass times gravity. So we can do that for Keanu, and we can do that for Bernie. Simplify, and then we solve. We find out that Keanu should be placed 0.8 meters from the pivot point so that the seesaw does not move, and Bernie and Keanu are at rest on that seesaw, therefore giving us rotational equilibrium. Net torque example number three, here we go. How much mass must be placed on the left side, 0.3 meters from the fulcrum, which is just that little triangle, which is also just a pivot point. The small one kilogram mass is about 1.5 meters from the fulcrum on the right side, and the board itself has a mass of three kilograms. So that makes this problem slightly more difficult, but still manageable. Again, we said that counterclockwise is going to be positive, and clockwise is negative. So the only positive torque is coming from object A. Since we want it to balance out just like before, all those things should add up together to equal zero. So we're gonna add the other ones to the other side. So we have the torque mass of B plus the torque of the board is equal to the torque mass of A. We're gonna start plugging our numbers in. You'll notice that we have 9.8 in all of these because it's just the force gravities of these objects that are helping to create the torques. So I'm just going to cancel out 9.8 from everything just to kind of make it easier on myself. And then we're going to go ahead and simplify. We get 1.5 plus 2.1 is equal to mass of block A times its radius. And then we just solve and find out that the mass of block A should be about 12 kilograms. So now let's go ahead and wrap things up. Initially, we talked about the torque equation on the left. And we talked about all this important stuff on when we can have a small torque and a big torque. 
And then on the right, we talked about the net torque equation and it talked about the direction and how it can be positive or negative, as well as what rotational equilibrium meant. Again, rotational equilibrium just means that the net torque is zero. A net torque of zero can give us two things. Option A is that we are no longer rotating and our object is at rest. Or option B is that we are rotating, but we are rotating at a constant angular velocity, meaning that we are not speeding up nor slowing down, which is similar to the equilibrium of net force because we know that zero net force means that we are either moving at a constant linear velocity or not moving at all. Hopefully you guys can make the connection between torque and force and notice how similar they are to each other.